This is the ICA in central London, the Institute of Contemporary Arts, which this year celebrates its 40th anniversary as a cultural meeting point. David Byrne of Talking Heads and David Bowie both turned out for their only London concert of the year to help the celebrations. Byrne and Bowie, both major musicians who've never been afraid to stray from the straight rock format into the experimental netherworld of the performance arts. And way before I started working with David, we had about four days to really um, start working on the structure and he's proven to be an amazingly good um, memory for movement because he had to um, learn a pretty complicated series of steps in about two days or three days. dancing with La La La, some years ago I've seen them performing and I like the fact that they were dancing and it reminded me some shows of rock and roll I would see so I thought that's the way I would like to dance. Our piece is uh, uh, I suppose a rather desolate, desolute rather, um, angel of death. Um, I think it was, it's his boredom at waiting for um, the, the, uh, the souls to give themselves up. Uh, as far as La 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 concerned, uh, I first saw them performing Human Sex, um, one of their dance pieces, about, about a year and a half ago, I think. I think Edward and I saw very much eye to eye about it shouldn't end just at the music. I think that one can then redefine the music through movement as well. Um, and bringing all kinds of, all the senses into play as much as possible, apart from taste. So it's a quite an old song, but uh, we went into a studio to rearrange the piece. I like the hard edged wall of guitar sound that uh, we've been able to put into this. I think visually it is quite stunning, absolutely, but I think musically I'm very pleased with what we're doing as well. I just don't know from day to day what I'm going to be doing next because it really depends on, on what I feel I should be doing creatively. If I could say it, I would, <laughs> but I can only write a song about it. When shopping at the supermarket, I got a great desire to walk off with someone else's groceries so I could study them at length and study their effects on me. So if I ate their groceries, I would become that person until I finished their groceries. And we might find ourselves going to the same places, running into one another at the movies or in a shopping mall, reading the same books, watching the same TV programs, wearing the same clothes. Traveling to the same places and taking the same pictures. Getting sick at the same time. Today you've been working with Le Les Miserables, brass ensemble, with, mm -hmm. with some, some uh, pieces from your knee plays. And it's the first time it's been performed publicly. Yeah, it's also the first time we've ever done it apart from the, uh, the theater end of it. Mm -hmm. Kind of uh, apart from the, the performers who perform on stage during the music. So it's kind of a, well, it's kind of strange for us too. You were at art college. Do you think, uh, and there is a tradition, especially I think on this side of the Atlantic, of like the Stones and Brian Eno, you know, everyone in between uh, went to art college. Do you feel that it's a declining influence on music? 
In other words, are less bands coming from art college now? I think, uh, yes. Now the musicians want to be painters because there's more money in painting. And when we had just, uh, we, when we first moved to Manhattan, most of the painters and artists had uh, dreamed of being musicians because it was, uh, there was an ideal to communicate directly with popular culture through a, through a more popular medium like music rather than something that had the, uh, the taint of being elitist like, like painting. And now that's completely turned around. Now, um, the, now it's much more lucrative for people to be in the art business. And so everyone wants to do that if they're not already a stockbroker. In the future, there will be groups of wild people living in the wilderness. In the future, there will only be paper money, which will be personalized. In the future, there will be a classless society. In the future, everyone will get to go home once a year. In the future, everyone will stay home all the time. In the future, we will not have time for leisure activities. In the future, we will only work one day a week. Most people in the world uh, are worried of, or thinking about how to make their own way, how to uh, survive, and they don't need someone coming them and uh, pointing at them and telling them and trying to shock them with some uh, strange kind of artwork. They don't have time in their lives for that, and they. Uh, it's difficult enough to, just to live, and they don't need this extra burden thrown on them by someone else. And so you can understand why there's a, a resistance to quote, the quote, avant-garde. Uh, it has the reputation of being uh, shocking and, and difficult. I think that's changing a little bit, though. Well. <laughs>